Okay, I think that we probably have everyone that is able to join just now. So, good morning. Good morning and welcome to our first proper Tuesday session. Um, it was very good to see lots of you in studio on Thursday and uh, in the building and on campus and I hope that you had a really good day meeting your tutors and those of you who were online it was great to get you involved as well and we look forward to you joining us soon. Tuesdays as you all know are going to be fully online that's the plan as things stand um, and hopefully we'll all get used to getting to the right link um, in future weeks in, in a smoother fashion. Um, but this morning, what we're going to do, um, we've switched a couple of things around again because we decided it would make more sense for you. What we're going to do um, is today is uh, the dissertation boot camp, which is essentially your opportunity to meet uh, the people who will be teaching you uh, in these Tuesday sessions and understand what their research interests are and start to think about what your research interests might be as well, what topic you might want to explore in your dissertation later in the year. Uh, so this today is the, the important opportunity to try to um, see where you might have shared interests with some of the tutors and start to develop a really, really very little brief uh, research proposal for your dissertation, a brief um, plan for what it is you're going to research in your dissertation and we're here to help you with that today. We're also going to have a workshop uh, later on at the end of the day with Caroline who you all met last week online, Caroline from the Language Centre who's going to be um, working with you today on how to be critical in your assignments which is really really big challenge for students always to learn how to not just be descriptive in their work but how to think and write critically um, in order to really assess and actively engage with the material in front of them and add new knowledge to, to, their, to the field and to the discipline. So that will be later at 4.45 as per the schedule, but with the rest of the day I must admit we have messed around with the timetable a little bit because we think that the new arrangement makes more sense. And what we're going to do first is give the introductory presentation from Demetra so that you understand how the Tuesday modules are going to work and what we're going to lead into with the cities and urbanism module. Then we're going to move after that into the dissertation boot camp where you can break out into separate rooms and meet the tutors and discuss your research uh, ideas with them. So let me just show you whilst I've seen you. I'll hand over to you just a second but let me just show you quickly first where I get it up you will be able to find the links if you haven't already to the individual meeting rooms for the tutors you'll be able to find them on Moodle on the dissertation page um, and they're all on the front there let me just share my screen with you So I hope you can all see that. Uh, you have to go to the dissertation Moodle page here and you'll see here under dissertation bootcamp we've got a meeting space for each of the individual tutors. So you'll be able to jump in and out. You don't have to pick one and stick with them. The idea is it's a little bit like speed dating. Um, so you'll be able to just join the different rooms dip in and out, speak to different people, go back to one again later if you want to have a long discussion maybe with lots of people that are in that group or just have a quick like question that you want to ask someone you can go in. There's not really any rules, it's quite informal, um, but please just go and talk to them all in, when you think that you'd like to have a discussion. Um, the structure for the day is that we will um, have a period where you can go talk to them first of all, develop your ideas a bit, then we'll have a break which will allow you to have an opportunity to actually write your proposal and that will happen uh, between um, about one o'clock and three o'clock. So you've got a two hour window there, one till three o'clock where you can go away and write, have a, have a first attempt at writing some ideas down on paper that you can 
can then take back and sh share with the tutors between three and four o'clock. After that, we'll have a break before your critical um, workshop with Caroline. Okay. Run through briefly what the tutors' different research interests are. And so, tutors, if you can get ready to, to share that with students, and if we also each write it in the chat box, I think that will make it easier for people to be able to see and refer back to. So, um, Tamara, would you be able to start us off? Sorry, Lucy, do you want me to write it or do you want me to, to say it? If you could do both, please, although obviously not simultaneously. If you could tell us <laughs> your interests and then afterwards just make a note of them in the chat box. Yeah, sure. Okay, hello everyone. Um, well, my, my topics of uh, research and interest are mainly related to public space, community, place making, gentrification, governance, and local identity. Um, so if you want to talk about something related to that or something new, I'm super open to hear uh, new ideas. That's right. me. Tamara, yes, if you just drop a note of that in the chat box as well. Uh, Dimitra? Um, hi, everyone. I hope that you can hear me. Sorry, I'm just going to close the window a little bit. I think it's getting noisy outside. Um, so my uh, research deals with the making of infrastructures in the city. Um, and how we understand um, city making through infrastructures and through infrastructuring as a process. Um, that is one, I would say, topic that someone could follow. Um, the other um, topic I usually deal with uh, when it comes to dissertations, it has to do with urban change um, and how urban architectural projects um, can be considered as actors of change or resistance in the city um, and how we can unpack the networks um, surrounding these projects, including the political, the cultural, technical, uh, the technological, and the legislative. Um, so these are my two um, topics and I will write them down in the box. Great, thank you, Dimitra. Yu Chao? Um, hey everyone, those um, of you who know me know I have a mixed background. Um, my research will actually focus on urban transition in the global south, which is a slightly outdated um, concept, but it overlapped um, with the concept of um, developing countries. So basically how um, cities in developing countries come to be how it is lived in um, everyday life. Uh, it is a very general research direction, I am aware. Um, but within this overall realm of urban transition, I have two particular interests. One is um, everyday urban life and inequalities. Um, those of you who are in my Studio A group would know that my recent research is based in Shanghai. Um, and second is the ethnography of urban home, which particularly concerns how migrants live in mega cities. Um, so I look forward to our discussions. I will type that in the chat box too. Thanks, you Chow. Kaya Luisa? Yes, um, I've usually kind of said that my research interests can be kind of divided broadly into two topics. So, um, cities in transition, so urban change in post socialist, post colonial situations, post industrial, and also post catastrophe. Um, and then also kind of revitalization of spaces, but also wastelands, temporary uses, and um, and kind of heritage debates in that as well. I will actually drop um, a document in uh, in the chat box if that's okay, because uh, yeah, I've got these written down. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Carl Louisa. David. Good morning. Um. I last year I I titled my sheet um, for my dissertation interests 
as a kind of why we do we build settlements. So I was very interested in really kind of archaic uh, foundations. Um, that is kind of the, the the original patterns that have uh, sent echoes through our streets. Now that sounds like it's not of interest, but of course um, our most recent work that we're doing is on buildings that are about to be demolished to make empty sites. So this business of going back to sort of the origins is really important. So I'm very, very interested in, in those sorts of issues, side by side with the fact that buildings are kind of disintegrate and die. So I've, I have a lot of work on ruinology and I have a, also a lot of work on festival and the celebration, celebrating urbanism, celebrating the town, in which case it's about kind of an anthropology of the town as well. So, yes, I, I hope that I can work with a, a very wide range of interests and look forward to meeting you. Thanks, David. If you could just drop that and a note of those keywords into the chat box. I think I well. should. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, Iwa. We have Iwa. Oh, we'll come back to him. I think we might have a technical issue. Um, da -da -da. Uh, we also have um, some new members of staff who will be waiting in the chat rooms, there's individual rooms, but um, aren't able to join this meeting. So I will, on their behalf, um, describe their research areas. Um, we have Simon Mitchell, um, and Simon's area of research is around the Bauhaus and architectural heritage, um, modern heritage studies, conservation practices, architectural historiography, and valuation studies. And if you think you might be even slightly interested in any of those things, or you want to know what any of that means, then um, feel free to drop into his room to chat to him. And we also have uh, Chatu Jakodi, who um, works in the area of global disaster resilience. So her research areas are sustainable and resilient public spaces, planning and designing sustainable shared streets, uh, successful waterfront developments, displacement and resettlement planning, urban planning and urban design interventions for disaster resilience. And we also have Rim. Rim Yassin Kassab does research on uh, Medinas and the social uh, construction around uh, those types of developments. I'll put all of that in the chat in a minute as well. And then myself personally, uh, my areas of research are around the design process in urban design, how we make decisions, how we design, what influences design, in particular, uh, the design theory and how theory influences what we design and what is built. Um, that includes using practice-based research methods, so using design as a research method. Uh, I also do some work on high streets, understand, understanding the rise and fall of high streets and drawing as a phenomenon and some work on environmental retrofit of housing to improve environmental performance of housing on a neighborhood scale. Um, Iwa, have we got Iwa now? No, I think he's had a problem joining the meeting. Iwa's interests, Iwa is an architect and his interests are around mythology and folklore in architecture. Who have I missed out? No one, I don't think. I think that's that should be everyone. So you've got 10 tutors, um, all with quite a range of different interests. You don't have to fit into one of these interests necessarily. Um, 
you don't have to subscribe to one of them and research something specifically that that tutor is working on. You very much should come up with your own topic about something that you're interested in, you're excited about, that you really like, really want to, to know more about and just discuss that with a few different tutors and um, get their feedback on it and see if there's somewhere a good fit perhaps. But don't feel restricted by our research interests. It's very much up to you to come to us with your own ideas. So um, let me just catch up on typing that into the chat box. Um, I'll keep adding that, but what we're going to do is now hand over to Demetra, who's going to talk you through the overall structure of Tuesdays and the citizen and urbanism module in particular, so that you can find your way through the overall structure of the Tuesday teaching. Okay, so Demetra, all yours. Thank you, Lucy. Um, I'm going to start by sharing. Okay, so I'm guessing if there are no complaints, I guess everyone can hear me okay. Um, welcome to Tuesdays. I know that Lucy has already um, shared a lot of information with you about um, the modules um, and the individual requirements for the for the modules, but I'm kind of going to reiterate a little bit today, especially for the students who weren't with us um, last week. Um, okay, let's see if I can do this technically. There we go. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk you through, uh, I'm going to briefly talk you through three modules that we have on Tuesdays. Um, I'm going to go over the briefs, um, talk about the um, assessments uh, or the requirements for assessment, and then I'm going to give uh, a short introduction to the um, seminar series that we're going to be doing uh, for the first few weeks uh, on Tuesdays. Are you sharing um, screen at the moment, Demetra? Because we can't see um, Not yet. Oh, okay, that's fine. I thought maybe we just couldn't see them. Sorry, carry on. No worries. Um, I appreciate that. Please do do let me know if I'm talking about slides and slides are not there. It's uploading. Still uploading. <laughs> I think I'm going to try to share a window instead of a file because I think I think that's the problem. Internet is not happy today. Not happy at all. Internet probably is still reeling from the Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp fiasco of yesterday. From global crash. <laughs> the end of life as we know it. No Instagram. So I have an option to share a window and then PowerPoint Live. I have found that the PowerPoint Live messes with the format and font and everything on your slides. Really? But maybe not. Oh, it's made me think. I think you might need to do the sharing window. Okay, so we actually have to leave the meeting and then come back into the meeting. Sorry, I'll be right oh. back. Okay, don't worry, we will take questions whilst you're away. So does anyone, any students have any questions about the dissertation boot camp and how that's going to work or what they need to do? Feel free to ask now. 
can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself. It's always nice to talk to you. No questions at all. It's very unusual. Hello, Lucy. Hi, hi, hi again, Tao. Hi. Um, I have a question. Do we need to uh, contact the tutor uh, before we meet them? Nope. They'll just be. No. Is it is as if in real life, in three dimensional life, they're sitting in a room waiting for you to come and talk to them if you want to. It's just drop in. So they will be available um, from 11 till 1 and then again from 3 till 4. I'll put that in the chat box as well. And during that time, they will just be there available. If you go to that link for their room, they'll be there for you to talk to. You don't need to make an appointment. That's a really good question. Thank you for asking. Okay. Hello, Lucy. Hi, Girish. Uh, hi, actually I had a question regarding the, you know, uh, earlier we attended both uh, the sessions of dissertation and research and this is the boot camp right, right now we are attending. So the thing is, if we are continuing, uh, whether we are going to continue on dissertation for the whole year and then we are converting that thing in a studio or this is a completely different thing. I'm not a hundred percent sure that I've understood your question. Okay. You asked so, if the so if we are continuing the the dissertation for the whole year, and in the end we need to you know uh, give one report and research uh, book kind of thing for this thing, and do we need to convert this thing in our studio C or something which should replicate something what we had done research into our design? Okay, so I think I understand. You tell me if I'm answering the right question. You're asking if the dissertation and the studio design work have a relationship with one another. Mm -hmm, yes. OK, so the answer is maybe. <laughs> it could be that you do your research, your dissertation work on a topic that is really closely related to your design work and the two things mm -hmm. inform each other, right? Because you're going to be mm -hmm. doing your dissertation for the whole of Studio two, uh, Term 2 and Term 3. So the same time as Studio B and Studio C. Mm -hmm. But it's not it's not um, essential. It's not compulsory. You don't have to have them looking at the same thing. It could be very sensible because, of course, then they can uh, support each other and you can use the dissertation to support your design work. What you discover as you're doing the design work can inform the dissertation, but they can be two separate things if you want. You might want to look at something in your dissertation that is really very specific and totally different to your design work, and that is absolutely fine. That's not a problem. That's completely valid. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Dimitra, how are you getting on? Hey, Lucy, can you hear me? I can. Who am I talking um, to? <laughs> just disembodied voices. It's so oh, it's, <laughs> it's Ahmad. Um, I'm, hi, just, Sarah, hi. I'm just wondering, um, the dissertation proposal we come up with today, do it, it do we have to like one hundred percent commit to it or will there be an opportunity to sort of like let it develop or transform later on? Also a very good question. Thank you for asking. No, it is not legally binding. You do not <laughs> stick with it and um, what we want to do is get you started right it's difficult to get started and it'd be very okay. easy to get totally invested in your studio a work and your cities and urbanism work and your research methods and completely forget that your dissertation is coming up later and don't want to at a standstill at the beginning of term two with no idea what you want to research you really need to already have a plan in place so the the idea is that what you write into a proposal just now today is just just to start, it's not something that you're then going to be held to. We would expect that it should develop. At the very least, it should develop. You should improve it, refine it, make it more specific, uh, narrow down the scope of it, maybe slightly change your perspective on it based on what you discuss with people and what you read and what you, if it's related to design, how that goes. So you would want to keep updating and improving and refining it at the very least. It might be that you do something, you come up with something today that you think is a good idea. Yeah. And then a few weeks from now, you think is really not what you want to do at all. Um, and if you really get turned off by the idea, then you can change it. 
later in this term. Um, that's okay. So don't feel like this is a high stakes game where whatever you <laughs> write down today, you are stuck with. That's not the okay. case. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I think more questions again at the end, but let's just check if Dimitra is ready to present, then we should go back to that. Dimitra, are you there? We lost it all together. Nope, there she is. I'm sorry about that. My computer decided that it's a good day to stop working. Oh, that's always the way of it, isn't it? Um, don't worry. Is it behaving now or should we? Uh, I'll try again. Excuse me, Lucy. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah. The I, the case is that I can't find my name in the group list. For your seminar groups. Yeah. Let me have a quick look at my list. Yep, you haven't been on any of my lists so far. I think, did you enroll late, perhaps? Maybe I, I enrolled in, but, but but my name is in the Studio A list. Why? That's because you voted, if you voted. Don't worry, I will add you to a seminar group and um, email you to let you know which one and update the lists. Okay, thank you. Um, so, it's not giving me the option to present anything really for some reason. Um, I tried this yesterday and it worked. And today, uh, yeah. If you want, you can share the file with me and I can try to share it on Teams. Uh, yes, that would be perfect. Thank you. Um, I'm actually trying to share the cities and urbanism brief. Um, You can send it to me by email and I can share the file here. Okay. Okay, which is the first one? The C in your brief. Okay.
Okay, so let's try this again. <laughs> Um, for those of you who weren't here last week, my name is Dimitra. Uh, I'm a former architect. Um, I've worked um, sort of all over the place, um, Cyprus, UK, um, Greece, Czech Republic, um, the US, um, New York City specifically. Um, and at some point I decided to um, kind of turn to research, uh, and to academia. Um, I did a master's at the New School uh, in Theories of Urban Practice, a program called Theories of, of Urban Practice. Um, and after that, um, I started uh, doing a PhD at the University of Manchester, which I'm about to complete very soon. Um, I've been teaching on the MA Architecture and Urbanism course for the past uh, three years now. Um, this is my fourth, um, with a specific focus on the theory um, modules of the program. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the three modules, uh, which is cities and urbanism, ideologies and futures, research methods and events, and dissertation. So these are your three modules for Tuesdays, and we're going to go over them, uh, over each of them briefly before I give uh, a short introduction to uh, your urban theory seminars, uh, which we've put together as part of the cities and urbanism module. Um, if you have any questions um, or comments, we'll leave space for that at the end. But if there's anything urgent that you feel like you want to ask, please go ahead. So your first module, cities and urbanism, ideologies and futures. Contemporary practice in urbanism has many sources of design guidelines and theories that provide a flexible approach to the complexities of most urban situations. This unit develops a theoretical framework looking beyond the style obsession of urban makeovers to the fundamental elements of city making. The scope of this unit uses historical analysis and develops a theoretical coherence using a mixture of case studies and historical examples to link the physical environment to the citizens within it. The purpose of this module is to familiarize students with a broad range of theories relating to the production and inhabitation of urban space. Major theoretical discourses of the last century have influenced how planners, architects, and theorists think about the past, present, and future of urbanization. The selected text gives students the opportunity to explore examples of important contemporary theories in urbanism and some seminal texts. These readings allow students to articulate their own findings on the nature of urban processes, guide them through the investigation of their dissertation topics and support them in developing their urban vocabulary. Students are encouraged to delve further into the specific areas of theory that pique their interest through self-directed study. So first part of the CNU are introductory seminars. Uh, the first few weeks uh, will be dedicated to these uh, where we will give sort of through thematic um, uh, seminars will give an overview of urban theory. So we'll have a theme each week, starting with an introduction to urban theory. Then we'll have infrastructures and systems. Uh, we'll talk about urban ecologies. Uh, we'll talk about architecture and politics. So each week we're going to have a theme. The, the purpose is to for you to gain a broad appreciation of current trends in urban theory and related disciplines. So this doesn't. So these seminars don't cover everything that um, you know that there is out there about urban theory. But it, it sort of gives you an overview of themes. It gives you an overview of key authors, key scholars um, that deal with urban theory today. Um, we try to keep the um, the readings sort of transdisciplinary, and, and I'll explain what I mean by that uh, later on, and we try to keep them up to date as well. Um, the aim of, this, of these seminars uh, is for you to learn how to understand the city through these theoretical frameworks that we're going to present, absorb a cross-disciplinary body of knowledge in urban discourse, develop your urban vocabulary, which you will later use in, in your dissertations, and to articulate your own theoretical alignments. So to kind of figure out what it is that you agree and disagree with, what, who do you kind of align with, who do you agree with in terms of um, scholarly um, debates. Um, the text and also in addition to text, we'll have 
um, a set of documentaries um, for you to watch. Um, that's, you know, for you to kind of engage with, with um, urban theory in a different manner as well, a little more interactive, a little more lively than, than you know, just text on paper. Um, and these skills, um, you will then be expected to develop further uh, and more independently in the second part of this module. Uh, each week, you have to prepare three questions or observations to contribute to the seminar, so either from the readings uh, or from the film uh, or documentary that you will watch. Uh, and you need to post these on Moodle before the seminar. Uh, the second part of this module are seminar presentations. So here uh, you will collaborate either in pairs or small groups to review um, chapter, specific chapters from a selection of books that we put, put together for you. Um, here you will give a presentation, so you pre prepare slides in advance uh, with your group uh, and you'll give a presentation of no more than 15 minutes um, to the rest of your um, seminar group and uh, colleagues. Um, and you will lead a discussion. So every uh, group will present each week um, their specific um, selected book. Um, on the Moodle page, you'll be able to sign up for one of the presentations. Um, however, every week, all students will have to read the texts uh, and prepare questions and observations for group discussion. So, you know, whether you are presenting or not, you still have to contribute to the discussion within the seminar. Um, so when it's your turn to do the presentation, as I already said, you'll have a visual presentation. So you'll have a few PowerPoint slides and uh, it would be ideal for you to prepare a one page handout um, where you summarize the key points of the reading. Um, it's important, um, and I think this is one of the reasons why we decided um, with Lucy to have the seminars beforehand, before you actually start you know, preparing for the presentations. We want you to try to develop a critical understanding of the readings. Um, so not just a descriptive presentation, but actually be critical of what you read and try to understand um, why it was written the way it was written, uh, when was it published, you know, in relation to kind of other um, discussions around the topic, uh, what was the sociopolitical, geographical, historical context um, of the book uh, when, the after, when the author was active, um, what was their discipline, professional background, because not all of the, actually most of the readings here are not written by architects, they're written by people in other disciplines, uh, who talk about architecture and the urban. Um, so it's, it's also important to understand kind of the context within which um, the author is writing. Uh, and here you will be asked to kind of summarize the key points and the main arguments of the text. What are the key principles of the text? What is distinctive or interesting to you about this? Uh, why it might be useful, um, perhaps for your own um, interests or investigations? Um, what issues might there be with it? Um, is it only descriptive? Is it not critical enough? Is it, does it exclude certain aspects of the topic? Um, and what are its implications for cities and urban designers? So these are some of the questions that we want you to look at when you're reading um, the books and the texts. Um, so part three of um, the cities and urbanism module uh, is to extend this work to write your own individual 3000 word essay. Um, here you will critically reflect on the text that you presented. Um, unlike the seminar presentation, you will be expected to go beyond looking at this text in isolation. So instead you have to relate the text to either other readings from the seminar series that we will go through, or to the, to the development of your own studio work. So to relate it to kind of the, the design aspect of the, um, of the course. Um, you should also consider the wider implications of the whole book for cities and urbanists. 
um, and this is likely to include debating the relevance of the theoretical work in terms of its principles, strengths, weaknesses, and cultural and political positioning. Uh, you might speculate on how readily, readily it may or may not translate into a useful tool, tool for analysis or intervention in an existing urban settlement, or how useful it might be to inspire the proposal of new settlements. It is essential that you write critically, as I already said, not merely descriptively, using analytical thinking and language to dissect the work. All work that you submit must be fully referenced in Harvard style. And MMU has a specific um, version of Harvard style that um, it follows, and we'll go through that in more detail, so um, don't worry. Uh, learning outcomes. Um, so we expect um, this module to offer uh, you, the ability to identify and evaluate um, generators that shape cities through time, um, a specialist knowledge and understanding of the key issues regarding urban design and architecture, uh, an ability to apply a range of research and design methods, um, an ability to critically uh, analyze, to reflect and to synthesize a body of knowledge, um, the development of a personal position in relation to future urban conditions and urban form, and an understanding of the contextual state of urban design practice, um, and the development of skills in both group uh, and team working. Okay, so I'm going to ask Tamara to kindly go to the um, RM brief, the research methods brief, please. Actually, let me pause for questions because then I'm going to be talking on for too long. And I don't want to go on for too long and people falling asleep. Do we have any questions? Nope. Anything in the chat? <clears throat> you can put it in the chat. If there's anything that you want to talk about if there's any questions you can always put them in the chat please okay so let's go on so the second module for tuesdays is called research methodologies and events uh, research methods is an opportunity for you to explore techniques and processes that inform design as a spatial practice in architecture and urbanism the research methodologies and events module introduces techniques that directly inform design as a spatial practice Research methods develops methodological capability consistent with the discipline of design production. This frames design practice and its associated reference data. Students are encouraged to develop the subject of their inquiry in parallel with their interests, career aspirations, and the content of studio units. This reflects the symbiosis between design practice and theory and allows for scholarship within individual specialisms located within a deeper understanding of architecture and urbanism as a whole. This takes the form of a reference essay report. Uh, events typically take the form of student-led international symposium on a theme, which is identified through discussion with the students. This module will introduce knowledge and understanding of research techniques and their possible application. It will equip students with the knowledge and skills to structure a short piece of research for the subsequent dissertation module in term two. This includes developing an understanding of different research methods and awareness of their strengths and limitations and how they might be combined to design a research methodology as well as skills in academic writing that will enable their, them to communicate their research. So there are, again, um, several elements to this, two elements to this module. Uh, part one is an outline proposal uh, where you will develop uh, an initial outline of your research proposal for your dissertation. And here you will use your critical reflections on research methods and a 2000 word paper. Um, this uh, is not expected to be a fully developed proposal, but um, sort of a, an outline that kind of um, investigates your research interest and uh, potential research methods that would allow you to explore that research interest. This should include an initial literature review proposed research questions, proposed research methods, and bibliography. The paper should be illustrated with drawings, photographs, and diagrams as relevant. 
Uh, part two of this module is a symposium uh, where you will collaborate uh, in the organization and delivery of a symposium themed around a pertinent topical urban issue. So of course, again, we'll talk about this and guide you through it. Don't freak out. Um, this involves the development of a topic, research into potential speakers, coordination of the speaker um, in the event, promotion of the event, and other logistical and intellectual preparation. Okay, I'm gonna move on because um, I think we I'm kind of running behind. You can scroll down, Tamara, please. Yes, okay, timetable. All right, okay. So let's go to, let's actually go and have a look at the uh, readings, any, any of the two readings that I've sent you, the, the two PDF files, please. Yes, so here's a little snapshot of the readings for the introductory seminars that we'll start with for next week. Um, so next week, um, I'm going to ask you to start with the introduction to urban theory readings. So we have one, two, three, four, um, four readings um, and one um, one film. Then we'll have urban systems and infrastructure. The following week, if we can scroll down a little bit, please. Urban publics and politics, and then we'll talk about urban ecologies. So these are our four themes for our urban theory seminars. And then in terms of the book presentations, there's another PDF for that. There we go. Okay. So these are the books that you will be asked to present or sections of these books that you will be asked to present. We have Jane Jacobs, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. It's a classic. Uh, Delirious New York, another classic by Ram Kulhas. Situation of City, um, The New Urbanism Towards an Architecture of Community. Um, we have a book on smart cities uh, and technology. Um, we have a edited volume by Dana Cuff, Pass Forward Urbanism. Um, we have a book about the rise and fall of council housing, which is a very interesting and critical book. Um, and then we have another classic uh, by David Harvey, Rebel Cities. Perfect. Um, now I'm going to thank you so much, Tamara, for your help. Now I'm going to try and share again. Are there any questions up to now? Speak now or forever hold your silence. It's loading. When is the Cities and Urbanism essay due? Good question. Because I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm going to go to the list when I find it. Tuesday, 18th of January, 2022 at 9 a.m. Do we have to read all the books? Well, you have to read the, all the books at some point. You'll read uh, one book every week, not the whole book, sections of it.
don't worry, you don't have to read all of them at once. Oh, wow, it's showing something. Can you see the slides? Yep, we can see that. Okay, can you see presenters view or can you see like normal view? Uh, we can just see normal view, but we can still see you as well. Okay, great, perfect. Okay, so apologies, the date is wrong. It's the 5th of October today. Are these books available in library in hard copy? Um, some of them are. We'll give you links to all the books. Most of them are available online, actually, through the MMU library or through the UOM library. Um, so you'll have a link to the book. You can read it digitally on your computer or your e-reader, whatever you prefer or you can go to the library and borrow it. It's up to you if it's, you know, if, if that works better for you, but don't worry, you'll get links to everything um, that you're um, required to read. Okay, so um, to reiterate, um, Tuesdays, three modules, cities and urbanism, ideologies and futures. Here you will be requested to do a group presentation and to write a 3000 word paper. In the research methodologies and events, you'll have a group work, which will be the um, uh, the event uh, proposal and organization, and you will also have a 2,000 word essay, which will be the outline um, of your research proposal. And then in semester two, you'll have, or after uh, in the spring term, you'll have your um, 10,000 word research piece. Right, thank you, Lucy. So the deadline for every submission can always be found in the module brief. So anytime you're looking for a deadline, you go on Moodle, you click on the brief, and then there, there you can find your, um, your deadline. So now I'm gonna give you a kind of a, a brief introduction to um, the urban theory seminars that we'll have in um, the next few weeks, um, starting from next week. So the purpose of these seminars, as I already explained um, in the brief, is for you to kind of expand um, your scope, to expand your understanding and theories of production and inhabitation of urban space. Um, I, I'm hoping that by the end of these seminars, you'll be able to kind of learn how to read um, and trace the city through the theories that we've talked about and the research methods that we that we'll talk about um, to absorb a cross disciplinary body of knowledge and urban discourse to develop your urban vocabulary and to be able to articulate your own uh, theoretical alignments and your own understanding of what the urban is and how we understand the urban. Recently, I came across this book, which is quite I would say old now. Um, it was published in 1996. Um, and this was given to us when I when I first started studying architecture, which was like 15 plus years ago now, um, as a seminal text in architectural theory. Um, as a set, it's, it's an edited volume uh, by Neil Leach. Um, it's a selection of texts uh, by key authors or what was considered at the time as, as a group of key authors uh, in architectural theory. A lot has changed since then, uh, but in fact, a number of these still remain as, um, as key texts uh, in our discipline. Um, what's interesting is that um, the past generation of architects and architecture, architectural theorists uh, have witnessed a very important shift. Um, at one point, um, before the 60s and 70s, um, Alberti and Le Corbusier were considered as the architectural theorists to look at and to read. And architectural theory consisted largely of writings written by and for architects. Um, in postmodern architectural theorizing, 
um, that changed. And more often than not, um, it takes the form of essays written by critics uh, or specialists from other disciplines. So we see people from other disciplines writing about architecture and the, and the urban and um, how we understand um, the city. Um, unfortunately, one result of this shift has been uh, an increasing isolation of the theory part from the profession as a whole. Um, although, again, this has been changing, changing quite dramatically over the past few years, I feel like there's still that rift between architectural and urban theory and architecture and urban practice as a, as a practice. However, going back to um, Neil Leach, I think he poses um, some interesting questions in this, um, in this selection of texts. How might architecture enact self-criticism? And how might architecture acquire the tools to perform the self-criticism? Self-criticism for any field must come from the domain of theory, since theory is exactly like a box of tools. Neil Leach goes on to argue that architecture as a discipline, very much embedded in practice, has fallen behind on developing the necessary tools for self-criticism. We therefore need to engage with external critiques in order to place architecture within the broader cultural debate by engaging with theoretical debates traditionally perceived to be outside our domain. Um, I would say that st this still holds to this day. Sorry. Starting from this premise, I present a similar critique of the disciplinary silos <laughs> that so often architecturally based urban theory resides in. As Leach argues, architecture and an extent the urban fabric is not an autonomous art as it is often held to be, but designed and constructed within a complex web of social and political concerns. To ignore this would mean to ignore the complex processes due to which the urban is produced and constantly reproduced, failing to understand its full social import. So as interdisciplinarity is becoming more and more evident in recent publications of academic scholarship and the architectural and urban disciplines, the architectural and urban disciplines might, must not be left behind. Cross fertilization can be key in the development of methodological and conceptual innovation, which can be witnessed in account of urban STS, which is one relevant field, or the ethnographic turn in architectural and urban studies. The following introduction to urban literature is aimed at students who wish to familiarize themselves with current trends in urban theory and the related disciplines, which is to assist them in choosing a topic of discussion for their written dissertations. This overview is meant to be purely informative rather than an in-depth study of the following themes, which we already talked about, from which you can find your niche at a later stage. So these are the readings that we'll go over next week. Um, so I call this introduction to urban theory from Lefebvre to actor network theory. Um, and this is kind of a selection of, I would say some, uh, some of the key epistemological directions um, that urban theory uh, follows currently. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about Ammon and Thrift, who are also considered kind of key in the urban discourse uh, in terms of how they talk about cities and how they theorize about cities. So what is the urban? According to Ammon and Thrift, cities have become extraordinarily intricate, and for this, difficult to generalize. We can no longer even agree on what counts as a city. We think of particular sites or moments when imagining a city. Paris as a cafe life, maybe. New York as Manhattan. Calcutta as the noise of traffic. I think I missed the presentation. Did I miss the, pre did, did the presentation go away? Yeah, we've lost yeah. the slides. <laughs> it 
doesn't like that. Okay, it's uploading. I'll keep talking. So most cities today sprawl across many miles, incorporating settlements of varying composition, derelict areas, parks and gardens, factories, shopping centers, um, parking areas, warehouses, dumps, anything that you can imagine. Half the world's population now lives in cities. 13 megacities have a population of more than 10 million. The city is everywhere and in everything. If the urbanized world now is a chain of metropolitan areas connected by places and corridors of communication, like airports, airways, rail stations, parking lots, then what is not the urban? Is it the town, the village, and the countryside? Maybe, but only to a limited degree. The footprints of the city are all over these places in the form of city commuters, tourists, teleworking, the media, and the urbanization of lifestyles. The traditional divide between the city and the countryside has been perforated. And here I want to open up the floor for students, but I'm waiting for this presentation to upload. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, maybe it's back. We can see the slides again, Demetra. Yay. So think about this, which particular sites do you think about when imagining your city? These are snaps from Manchester. And here I jump scale a little bit because I want to talk about what we consider as urban. Um, Two scholars, Neil Brenner and Christian Schmidt, would argue that the urban is in fact everywhere. Their urban theory lab at Harvard builds on the work of philosopher Henri Lefebvre, putting forward the radical hypothesis of the complete urbanization of society. This required, in his view, a radical shift from the analysis of urban form to the investigation of urbanization as a process. So this is the Urban Theory Lab, if you want to check it out. Um, really cool research based in Harvard. So we have this shift in our understanding of city and how we understand cities from the urban form to the urban as a process, as a continuous process. Moving beyond the urban, suburban, and rural distinction that has long underpinned the major traditions of urban research, data collection, and cartographic practice, they argue that the urban today represents a worldwide condition in which all political, economic, and socio-environmental relations are enmeshed, regardless of their location or morph morphological uh, configuration. This condition that they call planetary urbanization means paradoxically that even spaces that are located far beyond urban centers are still part of this urbanization from worldwide shipping to transportation lanes and communication infrastructures to resources um, to extraction site resource extraction sites uh, to coastal tourist locations offshore financial centers um, agricultural zones, um, anything that we have perceived as natural so far is part of this urbanization process. So their work um, looks at different topics that deal with this urbanization project uh, process, whether that has to do with um, the global trade of goods and services, 
um, alternative cartographic methods that take into consideration um, the urban as a process, as a sort of overarching global process. Um, they look at uh, corridors of migration uh, and good circulation. Um, and they also look at uh, multiple relations with nature um, and its processes. So if we talk about the global and if we talk about city, a city as being global and as being part of a global process, how do we understand the specificity of a place? How do we understand a place as special? What makes it distinct? So despite this global phenomenon, we still name cities and think of them as specific places. What makes the city a spatial formation? Stephen Pyle identifies three aspects that distinguish cities as spaces. Their density is concentrations of people, things, institutions, and architectural forms, the heterogeneity of life, they juxtapose in close proximity, and they're sitting of various networks of communication and flow across and beyond the city. Pyle agrees with Doreen Massey that the spatiality of a city, its density and juxtaposition of difference has distinctive generative effects. Massey explains that what makes spatial configurations generative are the intense social effects resulting from dense networks of interaction within them. Some of these effects are those emphasized by the great urbanists of the 20th century, including social detachment as a way of coping with crowds, civic association beyond family and kingship, attachment to artifact, distancing from nature and tolerance of difference, and withdrawal from active citizenship into self-preservation. The cityness of cities seems to matter, although it is a debate, or although it is debatable how far Spatial propinquity remains a central feature of the sprawling and global connected city. The possibility of recognizing cities as spatial formations gives us legitimate object of analysis. But how should we read them to make sense of their extraordinary variety and complexity? Cities are places of work, consumption, circulation, play, creativity, excitement, boredom, they gather, mix, separate, conceal, and display. They support unimaginably diverse social practices. They juxtapose nature, people, things, and the built environment in a number of ways. So in recent years, a momentum has been growing to understand cities through aspects that go beyond our form. And here um, I made a very draft draft bubble diagram of um, different disciplines um, that deal with city making and the urban. So for example, we have um, urban architectural studies, we have planning, geography, science and technology studies, sociology, environmental history, all of these deal with the urban and help us understand the urban through different perspectives. Um, professors Graham and Marvin, for example, offer a critical focus on network infrastructure. They talk about transport, telecommunications, energy, water, streets, and offer us a dynamic way of seeing contemporary cities and urban regions. For Kaika and Swingedow, technological networks are the material mediators between nature and the city. The urban fabric and the technological networks that carry the flows are a nexus of entry exit points of many interconnected circuits and conduits. From another perspective, Abdulmalik Simon um, frames the urban around the notion of people as infrastructure and emphasizes economic collaboration among residents seemingly marginalized and, and immiserated by urban life. All of these processes are inherently political what we can see through um, Yaneva's analysis of the political aspects of architectural design or Ananya Roy's examination of urban informality. 
So all of these are scholars and authors who deal with the urban in a multiplicity of ways. So where do we start? How do we start this examination? One of the readings that you're invited to investigate for next week um, asks you to zoom in, to zoom in, to choose a particular process that you're interested in and to zoom in into that process and understand how it takes place. Um, this actually is an interactive website that would that I would invite you to have a look at. Um, it's um, actually part of the one of the readings, Paris, the Invisible City, uh, by Bruno Latour and Emily Hermant. They trace how a street gets its name in Paris, um, and they trace it through the specific process all the different people that have to be involved in street naming from the committee that chooses the that chooses and approves the name to the people who make the sign to the planner who puts it on their computer and goes into cad and has to rename the street to the people in the van that actually take the sign and put it up and i think it's a very interesting way and a very useful one um, of understanding how the urban works and how all these processes are interconnected um, and what how we can understand the city through these. So that's my five cents. And I'm going to go back to The readings that we have for next week. Questions? I would invite you to Open your cameras if you like. Okay, if there's no questions just now, then um, we We'll jump to the dissertation boot camp. Thank you very much for Demetra for your presentation. Hopefully that gives you all a really thorough idea of what is in store for you on Tuesdays and in particular for the cities and urbanism theory module, the seminar module. You'll be able to watch this back, the recording of this session via Moodle. And of course the brief is on Moodle as well. So if it's a lot to take in at the moment, don't worry, you can go back and review these, these, these sources of information. I've posted in the chat box just now a revised schedule for the rest of the day. So please take a note of that um, and what you're supposed to be doing when. Um, and also we lost Iwa at some point, um, but Iwa also one of the tutors who's available today to discuss your dissertation plans. The chat box that he's interested in mythology, folklore, uh, publicly accessible private space, the changing role of the architect in city making and adaptive reuse. So bear that in I mind. Usually I'm back on. Just a oh, I think we've got Ewell back. He's back. He's back. Okay. So um, in that case, we will jump over to the dissertation boot camp. You can go to the dissertation Moodle page and see the links for all the individual meeting rooms and start to have some open informal discussions with tutors about your ideas. Okay, so I close this meeting and we'll see you in those spaces. Bye. <laughs>